Cajuns because Cajuns have this way of life that they actively try to live which is called living off the land now obviously Cajuns live this in all different degrees but every time I've been down there I've got a chance to really experience it you know we'll go out and catch fish we'll cook it up that same night so anytime you're hanging out with Cajuns you're always gonna be eating good and most of the time you're gonna be eating fresh and uh, the more Cajun a person is uh, the more they'll brag on how fresh uh, that that food you're eating is. Well, what's funny about that whole Cajun concept of living off the land is that it's not some foreign concept. I mean, Islanders live it. Um, in fact, all men have lived it. All cultures have lived it. That's the original uh, way of life. And a lot of people have really gotten away from that. And for me, as someone who spent the majority of my life, you know, being somewhat of a city boy, getting back to that way of life is, is something that I'm actively trying to do and, and kind of reconnect with. So hanging out in South Louisiana um, always does that for me. So for the last three years, I've been going down to Louisiana maybe about three or four times a year, hanging out with the guys from uh, KC Kayaks, Cajun Custom Kayaks. And over the years, I made a lot of friends um, out there. Uh, I made friends with Jared Leroy from the Alcoholics, uh, with the whole Hooked on Yak team, uh, Shane, Brent, and Trevor. So last time I was out there, Shane invited me out to his boathouse that was docked over on Fushan uh, around the time of uh, Ride the Bulls. So I got a chance to go out there. Uh, his folks were out there. They had fresh uh, shrimp and fresh crab. And I got a tour of the whole boat. It was awesome. So I was geeking out over the whole boat uh, and the whole concept of this boat house. So fast forward a few months later, uh, Shane invites uh, me and Rob out to the boat house uh, that's now uh, anchored up on a private marsh leash in South Louisiana. So Rob takes off from Dallas. I take off from Houston. I'm running a little bit late. So Rob's already down there and I'm meeting up Jared at the ramp. Shane's gonna come pick us up. What up? I thought y'all was doing the bus. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, uh, not going, brother. But Kaylee, uh, she didn't. She decided not to come. But you have some man time. Huh? But you have some man yeah, time. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm just wondering how big his boat is. I don't know. Me and Jared unload, and we got a lot of shit. All right, Jared. Put your friend at first, otherwise. I'm gonna be right back. <laughs> I'll wait, you know. You're good, man. You're good. <laughs> hey, what should I tell us off to? I'm cure all. So, oh, brother, how's it going? Good. Hey, y'all, come here. Come here. Come look at Shane's face. We ain't bring it all. We <laughs> bring all. It's all the camera gear. That's me and Jared's combined. We had a lot of shit, man. But look, man, Shane's a good host. He's a good sport. Uh, he gave us a little bit of a hard time. But nonetheless, we loaded up the boat and we headed out to the boathouse. Trevor just started cooking some deer sausage on the pit. And they got a chili, duck and bacon chili. It's smelling like duck and bacon in here. Bedtime. 
Got to fish in the morning. All right, so let me break down the situation. And this is almost classic. It's like classic tournament, uh, epic weekend uh, scenario, right? A couple days before this weekend, a uh, cold front comes through, winds are blowing, knocks everything out of whack. It's freaking cold. Look, man, I'm a tropical person, man. I fucking hate cold. Anyway, so it's cold, it's windy. We've got six people uh, and two boats. So that morning, uh, Shane made the call that we're all loaded up into one boat instead of bringing out two boats with all the kayaks all loaded down. We're going to go out, get a little tour, scout, see if there's any areas where you know we can safely get to without getting stuck. We're on autopilot. Who's driving the boat? <laughs> No one driving the boat! It doesn't matter. <laughs> Autopilot. It's like you've been here before. It's like you've been here before. It's like you want the boat driving so before. But I know where it's shallow. I, I yeah. Yeah. Know it's different you know. Yeah. yeah. I trust you. Definitely don't trust me. I'm not in no water. Right? <laughs> Man, dude. Mm. Okay, we're at the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody grab a rod. Uh, you just want to walk it along the flat. Hey, we're stuck. Pretty epic. This is pretty epic footage right now. I'm just saying. Yeah, this is a straight up adventure. This is how we get to the spot. <laughs> So that's why the fish are there, because no one else can get there. <laughs> Seriously, stop. Keep right going. Keep pushing, Trev. Don't stop. 100% work. Relax, <laughs> boy. I mean, if I was back there, that's what I'd be doing. That's stuff. We'd be out of here. Shane was there. I pulled aside. We're off the flat. Oh, yeah, just launch your gator tail. Oh no, we're just chilling. We just scout. Yeah, I'm right there. just trying to get over that shell. Yeah, we got to be alright. I got stuck right there. Well, but right here was the biggest fly. We made it past everything. Thank you. That was authentic. That was authentic, sure. Very. So after our little adventure uh, and getting unstuck, we ended up doing a little bit more scouting. We fished from the boat, and then we went back to the boathouse to drop off um, Brett and Trevor. Well, they couldn't stick around the whole weekend, but it was cool to hang out with them while they were there. So Shane goes to drop them off. He's kind of figured out a good spot where, you know, there's going to be some deep water. So me and Rob geared up and waited for him to get back. So we loaded up the kayaks on the boat, and that was a whole experience in itself. Uh, and uh, loaded down. What do we call this? Uh, and then we were off. Have you ever had a trip where you just put in and immediately you just feel a little bit off? Your cork gets stuck in your guide. Your braid gets all unraveled. Rob comes through with moral support. While I'm dealing with that, he starts working the bank ahead of me. Well, I get my gear all straightened out, and then I hit the other bank. Well, sure enough, I start hearing some hollering. Fish on! So 
So Rob's on a fish. He's all giddy and shit. I'm happy for him. Woohoo! Yeah! Let me explain something. Every single time I go inshore fishing with Rob, I always skunk. So this is the history that I'm going to this trip with. So immediately, I'm put on tilt. Anyway, so Jared comes through, pops some photos for Rob, and Rob pops his fish in Jared's cooler. I got mine. <laughs> Next thing you know, I hear Jared hollering. <laughs> so Rob's in the cooler club, Jared's in the cooler club. I have no fish. Shane doesn't really matter. I mean, Shane catches redfish for breakfast. So slowly the sun's going down, and now I'm trying to figure out the best angle for that epic skunk set picture. So I'll make my way back to the mothership. Shane, being a good host, being a good guide, uh, he put his kayak in, but he wasn't kayak fishing. He went ahead and met us down at the end so we wouldn't have to paddle against the wind to get back to the boat. So Jared gets put on the recon mission to pick up Shane's kayak. And he decides he wants to do a little bit of a marsh wakeboarding on his YOLO board. YOLO bro. YOLO bro. Look man, I can't even be mad. I mean, I'm on the water, I'm on a boathouse, and we're about to eat real good. And more importantly, we're about to practice living off the land. ketchup and beer mix. Just need something to make it congeal is all you need. That's ketchup, mustard, and beer on this redfish. And we got some... It's like mama used to make. Dude, speaking of what mama makes, mama made a chicken gumbo. She even says so with a little smiley face for us to come to the can this weekend. So I'm about to heat this up. Fried redfish and gumbo. Can't beat it. Fresh five fish. How's it going today?